the idea that four people who can't even get out of bed before 4 p.m. No. literally have no business knowledge whatsoever. No. The idea no. that these people no. are going to start an esports org, an All esports right. business right. that is extremely complex, yeah. very difficult, mm -hmm. in an industry that is very unlikely to succeed. The idea that that is the case. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is the case. Well, my, my take on OTK is mm -hmm. sort of like the outsider perspective. Let's like break See what down... He says. The members like why are those guys in otk like what do they bring you don't like rich well maybe he doesn't like you man who cares i like rich i actually like all those guys i've met all those guys i've hung out with all those guys in real yeah. life i i have nothing negative to say about any of those guys i, like I don't them. know what it is there's like people in twitch chat they're like fucking dying to let people know that they don't like somebody they're like I, man i don't like him dude man dude man fuck that guy it's like, what do you mean? Like, okay. I, I don't know. It's I just like it's weird. I like Miskiff. Yeah. I like Miskiff a lot. Rich is a very nice guy. I like Yasmin. I consider all those guys. Oh, look at that, so, dude. Uh, I, the goats, yeah, they're, they're really nice guys. And the thing is, like, all of them bring something uh, very. Let me turn the okay. music down just a little bit. They all bring something very unique mm -hmm. to OTK, which is why I think, like, they got those five guys together, right? So when they're making the team, it's like, I agree. Okay, you want to have people. That's with what I talents. thought, too on the team like you got to yeah. bring something to the team right exactly so i would say probably like exactly like what does s Fawn do s Fawn is like the charismatic kind of lovable like yeah. goofy guy he's a nice guy he, he's just like the lovable guy right um asman is obviously like you know asman is asman gold he's like personality huge following big personality not can, lovable can, uh, like uh, just i, I want to look here not lovable Okay, like S fan, yeah, definitely level. Asman, Asman's Asman. You know, it, it's it's a little bit different. Uh, we know him. Rally a community of people. <laughs> yeah. Like, Asman is Asman. Ooh. He's a community rallier, right? He makes stuff happen. I'm a community people, organizer. Due to his personality and his charisma. I like his, it. Uh, his uh, charisma, right? Yeah. Tips out. Um, Tips out is kind of like this is my take or my speculation on OTK. And and by the way, I want I want to say, I actually didn't know about OTK prior to yesterday when they announced it. So I, I we had didn't no tell a whole lot be. of people like, at all. Yeah, I just got deleted by Sean. Um, yeah, never heard about. It. Wasn't part of it. So tips out. This is my speculation. Is gonna be like the behind the scenes guy. He's the behind the scenes man. Tips out has obviously. That's true. Stopped that, that's streaming, true. pretty much. Other than the CEO, yeah. he used to stream every day or just about every day. He's kind of stopped streaming, and he's instead taken man, sort fuck of shamans, a dude. Pro producer angle, like to fuck shamans and his online content, where where he will host events and get other people involved. And like obviously, you saw that with the CDL and this the various three tournaments and three v three tournaments he's done, mm -hmm. which are really really cool for the community. I'm personally like not that into PvP content. I really like speedrunning and raiding and stuff like that. I'm not that into PvP content, but I still think stuff like that is really, really, really good for the community. He's like, he's yeah. like a project manager, right? And yeah, exactly. not only is stuff like that good for the community, exactly. he has put on a exactly. really, really good show with high production value and got mm -hmm. some very, very good and talented people involved mm -hmm. uh, where otherwise they wouldn't have. So, so true. I think any events OTK is, is going to do, One True King, the new gaming organization, to clarify once the again. The most true that has <coughs> ever been true. Um, and they, they mentioned doing podcasts and uh, YouTube videos or cooking streams. They, if they yep. want, they can produce this stuff very highly. And Tips Out is the guy to do that. Tips Out is a, is a producer. That's how I look at Tips Out at this point. Um, Rich Campbell has a very long history in esports. But here's the thing with OTK, at least it sounds like this to me. Okay. <laughs> it sounds like OTK is going to be a lot bigger than World of Warcraft. Like, uh, I think they mentioned, uh, you know, maybe having plans for other games. Like well, we want to. That's true. Like, obviously, like, WoW is, like, what we know best, and so that's what we want to focus on and, like, kind of build our brand on at the beginning because that's just what makes sense. Like, why wouldn't we want to focus on that and do what we know best? Like, it, it would be silly to go and, like, make content for, like, another game that we don't have the same level of competency for. Like, uh, of course, we want to focus a lot on, on WoW and, and doing events and, and, you know, doing things in WoW. 
of Exile. Yeah. And um, they've obviously talked about both retail and classic. We've actually stuff. had it's conversations about PoE things. I think they'll do a podcast that is going to be unrelated to World of Warcraft. I think they mentioned yeah. cooking streams and food reviews. Uh, what we they did say, that. Smite. Yeah, they, they would Smite. do more than that. And I think they're probably looking to... Yeah. Uh, another really cool thing about OTK that they mentioned was that they're looking to bring in... We're getting owned, dude. To bring mm -hmm. in... I'm soul stone for whatever reason. To bring in like lesser known, smaller content creators that uh, otherwise don't get exposure. You guys know that like it's yeah. very hard to get your foot in the door when it comes to streaming and content creation. That's a big complaint people have as far as like online content creation goes. And so it's always really, really nice to see organizations or you know Twitch when they promote when they promote yeah. small streamers or sponsors and partnership opp opportunities that kind of single out and uh, boost boost small streamers. That's really good to see. Like that's a really good thing to have going on in the gaming ecosystem. Man, People that fuck are willing to help shamans, smaller dude. content creators. And so this is something that like, all those guys have done. Fuck shamans. Own. I know for a fact, because when I was a small content creator, uh, you know, I I was on the call with Twitch and or with uh, on Twitch fuck with shamans. Tips and, and both Asman and McConnell uh, helped kind of get us yeah. going, and then we all helped each other can keep going like we would host each other and mm -hmm. uh, so any anytime you have people that are willing to go out of their way mm -hmm. and help other smaller streamers even when they don't get anything out of it that's a really good thing to see so uh, i would all agree those with guys that are very good like, yeah and, that's and definitely as, very uh, true has done that tips has done all those guys have done mm -hmm. that right R rich has done that so uh it sounds like they're going to do that as an organization like maybe small streamer highlights or what or yeah what, yeah yeah the fuck it's gonna be that's really really good you love to see it um I also think, and this is something that they mentioned during their, I watched Asma, I watched like half of Asma's announcement, and one thing that he said was that because they're a third party, it's going to make it uh, much better for them to host uh, like Race to World First events I agree. or Classic WoW events Very and stuff true. like that because they don't have uh, a team, they don't have a leg in the race, which no. makes them an unbiased yeah. third party uh, commentator team. We're just kind of doing I, it. 100% agree with. Yeah, Obviously, it's a third party if, thing. Uh, you know, if Limit is hosting a Race to World First yeah. event or Method is hosting a Race to World First event, they obviously want themselves to win, which results in biased casting or preferential treatment towards like who gets the most airtime on the yep. cast or whatever. There's whatever, always whatever. there's always the subtleties that people don't uh, don't realize with biases. And I think the subtleties are oftentimes more powerful and louder in a way, in an ironic way, uh, than, than the obvious overt things. So it, it, is, it is really, really good to have like an impartial third party hosting events or yeah. offering commentary on events. Um, just for the sake of the community, I think, I think it's way better to do it that way. I'm not saying that other gaming orgs like Limit or whatever shouldn't have their own events or try to build themselves oh, yeah. up. But yeah, it's, also, it's cool to have the other third party option as well. And, you know, as far as like the WoW stuff goes, WoW players, pro WoW players, like very highly skilled World of Warcraft players, PVE players and PVP players alike, um, they've always been underpaid, underappreciated. Yeah. They haven't really been uh, yeah. catered to by organizations uh, or Blizzard themselves. Like WoW, like really, really highly skilled WoW players have always gotten the short end of the stick compared to other <laughs> esports. Well, what's sad is like not only are the high skill WoW players not rewarded, but the low skill WoW players are. So you have people like, I, and this isn't just me, right? I mean, but like in general, like the people that are like really, really good, like nobody watches them because it's just like boring. You know, you want to watch people that are like, ah, you know, they're pretty good. They do fun stuff, etc. Right? And, and so. Like, it's like a weird paradigm where, like, people don't care about skill and WoW in the same way. And so, like, for us, like, more of, like, the struggle is to make sure that there's a way to communicate, like, the appreciation for the skill. And I, I think that's one of the big challenges that we have with, like, doing these events is how to make the events genuinely entertaining and make people want to watch them. Because the fundamental reason why WoW players are not paid a lot of money is because people don't care about watching the game. If more people cared about watching the game, if World of Warcraft had the same viewership as the uh, LCS, then you'd see WoW players get uh, you know, a 500% bonus or a 500% increase in their salaries overnight. But the reason why that doesn't happen is because of supply and demand. Or sorry, price and demand. The demand is low, and so-so is the price. That's all there is to it.
there's not a lot of people that are excited about it people like it's like how many people watch the arena world cup not a whole lot so here's the the challenge the the challenge here is that how to make sure that people are excited about watching the game how to celebrate the skill and accomplishments of players how to make these people feel like they're watching something that's entertaining and how to translate the skill that these players have in the game into something that's manageable and accessible to a casual audience and these are questions that blizzard hasn't asked very often and I think that really Method, you know, for all the bad things they did, they've done some good things too. And one of the things that they did is Method did an arena tournament where they created an analyst desk and the analyst desk helped make the arena matches more accessible to the casual player. And that was something that Blizzard saw and then they picked up on and they did in their own tournaments. So if for nothing else, I think that we could be a great proving grounds to see if good events would be possible in other ways besides just what Blizzard, uh, you know, like Blizzard is a very narrow vision in my mind. And I know why it's because they want to stick with what works. We don't have the same. We can afford to take risks in a way that Blizzard can't. And because of that, we want to do that and potentially expand the community. Is there going to be a possibility that some of them won't go well? course but we'll try yeah but we'll try you know if, if you compare like the yearly income of a really highly skilled world of warcraft arena player yeah to the yearly income of a really highly skilled you know fortnite player or league of legends player <laughs> or whatever it's like comparing a doctor to somebody who works at mcdonald's like i mean that's really what it is they and it's weird because they don't get anything and it's weird because i think that desire is there uh like th there is the viewership to warrant it it's just that um it's just like on an infrastructure yeah. level it's never it's never really like followed through and that was like you mm -hmm. can say what you want about method but uh, yeah. and method did a lot wrong one thing method did really right was boost up a lot of wow streamers and also boost up a lot of uh, like professional wow players and provide mm -hmm. an income and, and actually put food on the table that for is true guys. Which is really, really very good. true. And I'm saying that as someone that was very, never very on method. True. Like I actually got a method offer twice. I Big very and so I true. Interested for my own weird, so you know, true. Spurred out reasons. I'm, I'm just like like to do my own thing. So but, real uh, and so true. I, I gotta give like that's one thing that method did really, really well was uh, boost people up. Uh, yeah, because every single person in the WoW directory was fucking sponsored by method. Like ev every fucking one. Like, you, you'd go and, and you would look at, like, the WoW directory, and every single fucking thing would be, like, method, 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 method. I'll be right back. Okay, back to the house. And give them a platform and foster their, yeah. like, pro play, when otherwise they perhaps wouldn't have been able to do that, right? They're putting food on the table. Like, it was a really good thing mm -hmm. that they did. And so when method fell apart, there was definitely a void, a gap to be filled in the WoW section. And, uh... You know, hopefully OTK will do that. It looks like that they're uh, setting up to do that. I mean, they've already signed Sea-Doo, and Sea-Doo's arena. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that, dude. Wash hands. Why would I wash my hands? I got a clean dick. So I, I forgot to even say this, because I know a lot of you guys d didn't see this. You might not see it in the stream yesterday with Miskiff. But we did sign a team. And we signed Sidu's team. We signed them three months ago, or a little bit after, a little bit. I forgot like really when it was, but we signed them very early on. Now it's unfortunate that we didn't get the opportunity to really uh, be able to show off and and support them during the uh, during the arena circuit, like publicly and like you know post about it, and like say who we thought we were gonna win or who we wanted to win. But we had them sponsored this entire time. And we just weren't ready to make the announcement, but we said, you know what? Fuck it. Let's lock this team down. This is the team that we want to have. And that's why we did it. And so, uh, that, that, that's the team that we're sponsoring. A team, I think, okay. which includes four people, Mass and Trill, Zidu, and one other person whose name I'm forgetting right now. Yeah. But like, it's stuff like that. You love to see it. Like all those guys are nice yeah. guys. That's good. Shit. Hopefully they sign more people like, the, like yeah. Sam, Sam, I am or Sammy. Am. Yeah, exactly. Um, Ability, thanks for five subs. You, you want to see those Thank players you. taken care of, right? 
yeah. uh, by a good org that is looking out for their genuine well-being. So Quins. I think that's probably uh, one thing that's going to be happening. But I think OTK has a lot of potential for really, really good content. I'm talking, we talked about this a minute ago, but we're talking podcasts, like highlight clip videos or just like unique videos on the channel, yeah. on the YouTube channel. They have a YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you put, all, you put all five of those guys together, it's a uh, yeah. content powerhouse, right? Like how, how, how are you going to put Asmogold, S1, Rich Campbell, Miskiff, and Tips out in a, in a room and not, not just be like dripping content, right? It's going to be easy. It's going to come so natural. It's going to be super entertaining. I like I'm, that. I'm Sounds personally good. looking forward to it as, as a viewer of like this type of content. I think it's going to be good. Certainly a powerhouse, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, awesome. When I mentioned the method thing, I never joined method back in the day. Um, before that all you know, <coughs> fell apart, people said in chat, they said, would you ever join OTK though? Would you join those? The question okay. I see in chat right all now. Right. I would be open to it, but this is yeah. how I approach stuff like this. Like you guys know, I've never been in an org, and uh, I'm Stay Safe kind of does his own thing. Two and a half years of full time streaming, yeah. I've only ever taken two sponsorships. And the reason why is I'm very, very, very picky with um, the deals I take. And um, I never want to like sell out too much or lose my own identity or have to change my content. To That's like kind of the way that I look at it. The funny thing is that I actually, um, I actually think the exact same thing. And the reason why I ended up making the org is because I was going to join another org, but they wanted me to do stuff that I didn't want to do. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do, I'll, 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 all right, fine. I'll do my own thing. I, I guess we'll, we'll move on. I'll look at a little bit of the, uh, of the Devin Nash thing. So OTK. It confused me at first what it was, and I think it's important to figure out what this team is, what this yeah. team advertises itself as versus what it is. Okay. There are five people that are starting OTK. Asmin Gold, SFAN TV, Ms. Kiff, and then you've got two people that are um, running it, Tips, and the fifth dude is Oh no. Rich. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Oh no. So, notably, Let's structure it this way, because I think this is the easiest way to understand it. When they first advertised yeah. this, I thought that this yeah. was a actual like esports org, and it is, right? But it's actually better to think about it, at least for now, as a content network. The yeah. the easiest corollary here, yeah. the analogy here, would be offline TV. This would be the closest thing. Oh shit! It's a group of content creators who have people that are focusing on uh -oh. the business that are building uh -oh. the um, building the structure uh -oh. of what this is going to be. And that is a really <laughs> important distinction for later. Okay? So, so I saw somebody posted the picture of like our announcement thing and like our lineup with like offline TVs. And apparently I think we had the same company do it or something because they're the exact same fucking thing. Like they're, they're the exact same fucking thing. Like, I'm going to have to find it and show you guys. Uh, Devin usually does, like, a, a breakdown at the beginning, and then he'll talk about it more later on. That's the reason why I'm doing it now. So they are not launching, like, a, a traditional yeah. esports team. All of these events, yeah. these events are content events, right? And they do have an esports team that they've picked up, and we'll talk about that. Yeah, and it is go I do believe it's going to be a legitimate esports org, but we're going to talk about the differences between that. And I think to do that, so that's basically what OTK is. OTK, uh, the OTK network, right, is... The, these current three streamers, two people running it full time, and then they're going to be hiring other people, graphics yeah. designers, video editors, people like that. Okay. Uh, and then they may or may not be bringing other streamers into the network. I think that they eventually will. We will. We will. But I don't think that will happen for a while. Uh, anyway. Uh, let's go back over. Uh, I'll look at the Reddit. We'll see what happens, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. So uh, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to go through uh, any of that other stuff. Okay. And uh, who's handling the careers at OTK? A lot of people have like a lot of concerns and questions. I, I know that this is like something I talked about yesterday too, uh, or the day before, um, I, I, about like basically like concerns about like how is this actually going to happen. Like, cause you know, you see me, you see S-Fan, you see Mizkif, and it's like, wow, these guys don't fucking do anything, right? 
And so, like, Rich at least does some stuff. And, and Tips does stuff. But the, the three of us, you know, the, the, a lot of you guys know, like, we don't really do anything. Well, that's why we hire people to do things. We focus on what we're good at. And we hire people to focus on what they're good at. Because that's what smart people do. That's the plan. This is actually a very, uh, I, I really mean this. This is going to empower a lot of us to make more content and not less. Because we're all going to be collectively, uh, you know, making these decisions together and planning things out. And so uh, I, I'm not worried about it at all. Uh, obviously, like, we're still doing some of the back-end stuff now. And uh, it's going to take some time for us to be able to really kind of make the right decisions on who to bring into the, uh, uh, into the organization on a professional level. And uh, obviously, like, you guys need to remember this, okay? You got to remember this. Um, I am, I, 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 I have a degree in business. Like, uh, Mizkip, I think, has a degree in finance. Like, SFAN has a uh, degree in sports management. It's not really the same thing, but it's like a general, like, a general focus. Like, a lot of us have a, a certain level of competency in this and i think that we're uh i think that we're in a good position to succeed now obviously uh we're gonna run into hiccups and road bumps and things like that along the way but the way that i look at it is that like there's nothing you you never go into anything and you never have like a guaranteed success rate on anything that's the truth in life uh it was very few things okay like graduating third grade you know, you've got a pretty high chance at making that one happen. But uh, there's plenty of other things that, you know, they're more uncertain. And, you know, whenever you move into things like making a business and things like that, there's a, a huge risk of, you know, maybe it's not going to go well. Maybe uh, things are going to crash and burn. But I'd rather try. And that's what we're doing. And we're trying. That's what it really comes down to, man. I know a lot of people probably, uh, I said this yesterday, um, a lot of people are probably in afraid, afraid to get invested based off of what's happened with previous orgs and you know, a lot of their favorite streamers uh, you know, this year. Uh, it's been a very, very trying time to be a, a fan of viewer uh, of, of streamers or of content creators online. It's been a very hard time to be a fan of that. And unfortunately, uh, I can't really do anything to, to make you feel better with that, except for just, you know, making good content and uh, trying to distract you as much as possible. That's really what it comes down to, man. And uh, that, that's how I see it.